Hello everybody, hello my dear students of grade 6. Today we will continue our story, chapter 1, that we covered the first part of last time, talking about Miss Mary, little Miss Mary. Last time I told you that Mary was a girl who lived in India with her parents and that her father worked as an official there. Her mother spent most of her time going to parts and she was a pretty woman. One day when Mary woke up, she found another servant next to her bed. So she was upset or angry and shouted at the servant and asked her to bring her own servant called Kamala. But the servant didn't reply the request of Mary because at that time Kamala was infected with the disease that was killing a lot of people around the town. After that, we knew that Mary heard her mother talking to a young Englishman about the disease, which is the cholera, and that most of the servants around the house died of that disease. Now we'll start part two of our chapter. The Secret Garden, chapter one, part two, Little Miss Mary. Please follow me on this presentation. We'll start with the review. We'll start with the review. A question from the previous part that we covered. How was Mary's character? We talked about her character. Yes, she was a disagreeable girl. She was a very selfish, disagreeable, bad-tempered little girl, as we mentioned last time. Now, let's get to the second part of the chapter. This is the first page we have here. We stopped last time at the point that nearly all the people in the house were killed by the disease and some other strange men were getting inside the house searching for the child. That child was Mary, of course, as I told you last time. Let's see what's going to happen. So, Mary heard the voices of the men in the hall, and suddenly they entered the room of Mary and found her standing in the middle of the room. When they entered the room, she told them her name. She said, my name is Mary Lennox. Have you got this? She said her name and asked them why, why didn't anybody come to take care of her. So one of the men was very sad, replying her and saying that nearly no one is alive to come to take care of you. At that point, Mary knew that her parents, her father and her mother, were dead because of that disease and that she was all alone. She wanted someone to take care of her. Let's have a look at the points covered on this page. The men looking for Mary entered the room to find her standing and tell them her name, Mary Lennox. She told them that she was asleep. She asked why no one came to take care of her. One of those men told her that no one was left alive. Mary knew that her parents died and that the servants who were still alive ran away. Some of the servants weren't killed, but they ran away out of the house. Mary didn't miss her parents, and this part is a very important part that you can be asked about. Why didn't Mary didn't feel any pain or missing her parents? Because she had never known them well. She cared about herself only, as we said before. She was taken, after that, she was taken to live with an English family who had known her parents. So she lived with an English family. They had a boy called Basil. She didn't like living with them. She didn't like living with that English family. One day, while she was playing her favorite game, which is like making a, her flower garden, 
she found that boy called Basil coming to her. One day, while she was playing in a garden, one of the children of the family, the English family, called his name, Basil, offered to help her, to help her in her game or so. But she refused. She is a disagreeable person, as we said. He started to annoy her, means to make her angry. He started to move around her and sing a song about little Miss Mary and her uh, garden and so on. She was very upset at this situation. Next. Here we have some questions on a part we covered. What did Mary tell the men who came to her room? What sad news did one of the men tell Mary? Where did Mary live after the death of her parents? These are very important questions. First one, where, or sorry, what did Mary tell the men who came to her room? She told them about her name and that she was asleep and asked why no one came to take care of her. Second question, what sad news did one of the men tell Mary? He told her that no one was left alive to take care of her and she understood at this point that her parents were dead. Three, where did Mary live after the death of her parents? She was taken to live with an English family who had known her parents. Let's move on. Here on this page, you see this is Mary. She looks disagreeable all the time. And this woman is called Mrs. Midlock and she is the housekeeper of Mr. Craven, the uncle of Mary. Let's see what is going to happen on this page. So the boy who was moving around Mary and telling her that uh, she is like a noisy girl or so and he's making her annoyed. He told her that he's happy that she was leaving the family soon. She will leave their house. So where were she going at that time? So the boy told her that she was going to live with her, with her uncle in England and she didn't know that she had an uncle. She was astonished. She didn't believe him. But the day after she was told by the parents of that boy, the English family I mean, that she was leaving to live in a place called Yorkshire. As you see the highlighter here, Yorkshire, it is the name of a place in the north of England. Mary looked bored, this hair feeling, and cross, angry and said nothing. She's not caring about anything but herself. So here, let's see the points. Basil told Mary that he was happy that she was leaving the house soon. When Mary asked him where she would go, he told her that she was going to live in England with her uncle, Mr. Archibald Craven. She told Basil that she didn't hear of her uncle before, as I said. The day the day after, the next day, Mary was told by Basil's parents that she was going to live with her uncle in Yorkshire in the north of England. She looked bored, her reaction, cross, and said nothing. Next part. Questions on the part covered. First question, what did Basil tell Mary? What did he tell her? Of course, he told her about going to live with her uncle. Where did Mr. Archibald Craven live? Talking about the place he lived, the city, the house, and so. How did Mary feel about going to live with her uncle? Yes, let's see the answers. Number one, he told her that he was happy that she was leaving to live with her uncle in England. Number two, where did Mr. Archibald Craven, the uncle of Mary, live? He lived, we have to add D here, he lived in a large house in Yorkshire in the north of England. Three, how did Mary feel about going to live with her uncle? She looked bored and cross and said nothing. 
the export so here after a, a long journey after a long journey at sea Mary met Mrs. Midlock the housekeeper of Mr. Craven when they met each other both of them didn't like each other so Mary didn't like Mrs. Midlock and Mrs. Midlock the same didn't like Mary she saw her as a disagreeable child on their way Mrs. Midlock told Mary about the house of her uncle, how large it was, about the gardens, and so on. Mary didn't care about what she told, and when Mrs. Midlock moved to telling Mary about her uncle's wife that died, Mary started to be interested. She asked her, did she die? So she started to care about what she was saying. So here, let's see the points considered here. After a long sea journey, Mary met Mrs. Midlock, Mr. Craven's housekeeper. They didn't like each other. Mrs. Midlock told Mary about her uncle who had a crooked back and lived in a big house and that he didn't care for anybody since his wife died. So he had a wife and she died for some reason we'll know later in next chapters. And after that time, he didn't care for anybody. He spent most of his time alone, sad. Mrs. Midlock asked Mary to stay out of her uncle's way, of her uncle's way, this word is way, because he wouldn't like to see her or anyone. He's not caring for anyone. Here we have this part, the train, so they were on a train. They were on a train and the train arrived at the station. Now they will take a drive to the house of Mr. Craven. So here when they arrived at the train station, it was dark, it was night. There was a long drive, it took like a car or so to get to the house of her uncle. On their way, Mary heard a very strange noise she asked mrs medlock is this noise coming from the sea mrs medlock said no it is the moon m double o r what does it mean this word the moor? and mrs medlock told her the meaning of the moor. she said it was just miles and miles of white land with no trees or houses so it's like a desert, no, no trees, no, no houses, no people living there. It is a white place. Mary didn't like the frightening noise for the moor, from the moor and looked more disagreeable than ever. So here we come to the end of this chapter. We'll see what is going to happen in the house of Mr. Craven when Mary arrives there. And now we have some questions. There are actually three questions. These questions are very important. You have to answer these questions and discuss the answers of these questions with your teachers in classes when you come to school. And here we come to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.